President, the initial punishments sure. that the U.S. is threatening against Russia further advances into Ukraine don't seem to be having much of an effect. What leverage do you believe you have over President Putin at this point? And is the U.S. concerned primarily about getting Russian forces out of Crimea, or are you also concerned about Russian forces moving to parts of eastern Ukraine? All of the above. Uh, you know, I spent the weekend uh, talking to uh, leaders across Europe, and uh, I think the world is largely united in recognizing that the steps Russia has taken uh, are a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty, uh, uh, Ukraine's territorial integrity, that they're a violation of international law, they're a violation of uh, previous agreements that Russia has made uh, with respect to how uh, it treats and respects its neighbors. And uh, as a consequence, we got strong statements from NATO, from the G7, uh, condemning uh, the actions that Russia has taken. Uh, and we are going to continue these diplomatic efforts uh, during the course of this week. Um, my interest is seeing the Ukrainian people be able to determine their own destiny. Uh, Russia has strong historic ties to the Ukraine. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Russian nationals inside of Ukraine, uh, as well as native Russians, uh, as there are a lot of Ukrainians inside of Russia. There are strong commercial ties between those two countries. Uh, and uh, so all of those interests, I think, can be recognized. But uh, what cannot be done is for Russia, with impunity, to uh, put its soldiers on the ground and uh, violate basic principles that uh, are recognized around the world. And. I think the strong condemnation that it's received from countries around the world indicates uh, the degree to which Russia's on the wrong side of history on this. Um, we are strongly supportive of uh, the interim Ukrainian government. Uh, John Kerry is going to be traveling to Kiev uh, to indicate uh, our support for the Ukrainian people, uh, to offer very specific and concrete packages of economic aid, because one of the things we're concerned about is stabilizing the economy, even in the midst of uh, this crisis. Uh, and what we are also indicating uh, to the Russians is that uh, if, in fact, they continue on the current trajectory that they're on, uh, that we are examining a whole series of steps, economic, diplomatic, that will isolate Russia. Uh, and will have a negative impact on uh, Russia's economy and uh, its uh, status in the world. Uh, we've already suspended uh, preparations for the G8 summit. I think you can expect that there would be further follow-up on that. I think we're taking a look at a whole range of uh, issues that John Kerry mentioned yesterday. Uh, and the, the question for Mr. Putin, who I spoke to directly, uh, and the question for uh, the Russian government generally is um, if, in fact, their concern is that the rights of all Ukrainians are respected, if, in fact, their primary concern, as they've stated, is that uh, Russian speakers and Russian nationals uh, are not uh, in any way uh, harmed or, or abused or discriminated against, then we should be able to set up international monitors and an uh, international effort that mediates between various parties, that is able to broker uh, a deal that is satisfactory to the Ukrainian people, not to the United States, not to Russia, but to the Ukrainian people. Uh, and we should be able to de-escalate the situation. And so we've been very specific with the Russians about how that might be done under the auspices of either the United Nations or uh, the OSCE or some other international organization. And John Kerry will, will pursue that further uh, when he arrives. Uh, and so there are really two paths that uh, Russia can take at this point. Uh, obviously, uh, the facts on the ground in Crimea are deeply troubling, and Russia has a large army uh, that borders Ukraine. Um, but. What is also true is that uh, over time, this will be a
costly proposition for Russia. And uh, now's the time for them to consider whether they can serve their interests in a way that um, resorts to diplomacy uh, as opposed to force. Uh, one last point I would make on this. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of talk from Congress about what should be done, what they want to do. Uh, one thing they can do right away is to work with the administration uh, to help provide a package of assistance to the Ukrainians, uh, to the people and that government. Uh, and uh, when they get back in, uh, assuming the weather clears, uh, I would hope that that would be the first order of business. Uh, because uh, at this stage, there should be unanimity among Democrats and Republicans that uh, when it comes to preserving the principle that no country has the right to uh, send in troops to another country uh, unprovoked, uh, we should be able to come up with a, a unified position uh, that uh, stands outside of partisan politics. Uh, and my expectation is, is that uh, I'll be able to get Congress uh, to work with us uh, in order to achieve that goal.